Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to talk to you about nitrogen and it's going to be a lengthy video but I really wanted to cover what nitrogen is, where it comes from, talk a little bit about organic nitrogen, um, synthetic nitrogen, chemically processed nitrogen and just really let you know what it is, how you use it and it'll give you just a really good idea of what you're putting in your garden. Nitrogen is one of the major macronutrients. There's actually two levels. The primary macronutrients are nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. If you don't have those in enough quantity in your garden, you're going to have issues with your plants. And then you have the secondary level, which is calcium, magnesium, sulfur. And if you've ever seen your tomatoes get um, brown spots beneath the tomato, it looks like it's rotting. It's usually a function of either not having enough calcium in your soil or your plant can't use the calcium in your soil. So the macronutrients are the main nutrients, but today I'm just going to talk about nitrogen. I will talk about the other ones really over this winter. Nitrogen is important because it's associated with leaf growth, stem growth. It's just about in uh, every protein in the plant. It helps your plant with defense against insects, with against diseases, and it's part of the chlorophyll molecule. So if you didn't have if you don't have enough nitrogen in your garden, your plants aren't going to grow well. They're not going to be leafy, they're not going to be green, they're going to have trouble with uh, photosynthesis, they're not going to develop enough chlorophyll, and you can kind of get the, you know, gist of it that the plant's not going to be healthy. Sources of nitrogen. Nitrogen, first of all, is a common element that makes up nearly 80% of our atmosphere. So it's a gas, we breathe it in. In that form, obviously it doesn't hurt us but in that form plants can't use it. So it's a gas that is all around us but in its pure form plants can't use it. So nitrogen has to be fixed or converted into something a plant can use. There's different processes for this. Um, a couple of them are biological compost for example as you compost down vegetable matter, leaves, grass clippings, the microbes, the organisms break down the product that's in your compost pile and it makes it and actually turns it into a form of nitrogen that your plants can get to and use. Also you would have uh, beans, peas, this is crimson red clover, it's a cover crop. These plants fix their own nitrogen which really means the root systems grow into the uh, soil and the roots have nodes on them that work with rhizobia bacteria to convert atmospheric nitrogen into a usable form of nitrogen. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Bottom line is the beans can pull nitrogen from the air with this relationship. So can peas, so can red clover, uh, alfalfa, different kind of plants can do this. If you were to grow, say, a cover crop of crimson red clover or just put lots of beans in, you let the root systems develop, they pull nitrogen into the roots, you then turn the plants over, chop it up, let it decay in the ground, you're going to put nitrogen right into your garden and I actually do recommend that. That's one of the best ways to bring a nice form of nitrogen into your garden if you have the time and the space and can do it. Then there's the chemical process which is changing nitrogen into ammonia. All these things have to do with one thing, it's converting um, nitrogen into a bioavailable form. So d nitrogen has to be turned into a form your plants can use. So you have organic forms of nitrogen, compost, blood meal, fish emulsion, manures, urine even. And I just wanted to show you these uh, numbers don't go with these specific uh, forms of organic fertilizers but it's just a way to understand what you're buying. So if you buy a product and it has 800 on it, the first number is always nitrogen. So by weight usually it's 8% of that product is nitrogen, 12% of this product is nitrogen, 15% of that product is nitrogen. So when you go to buy uh, fertilizer you really have to know what these numbers are. I have some videos on them but the first number is always telling you the ratio of nitrogen in the product. So you have the organic forms, you have the biological um, uh, process that nitrogen is converted into a form your plants can use. You also have synthetic or in inorganic, chemical, non-organic, man-made, however you want to say it. It's basically nitrogen being chemically processed through a Haber process. He uh, created this I think at the turn of the century and it really revolutionized gardening, uh, actually farming, because 
there were cheap amounts of nitrogen available for you know feeding the world. The process is basically taking nitrogen uh, through lots of heat, energy, through the chemical process, that's how you get uh, the, the synthetic label thrown onto it, you form a gas NH3. Now it's in gas form, obviously you can't put that into your garden, so they mix it with water. When you mix it with water you get ammonium hydroxide. This is a 5 to 10 percent solution of ammonium hydroxide and it's just plain old clear ammonia. You could actually use this as a form of nitrogen. I don't recommend it, but you could use it. Um, I've experimented before taking ammonia, putting it onto a cold compost pile. The nitrogen in here works with the brown uh, leaves, the brown matter, and kind of really ignites the pile, so to speak, and, and it does work out in that capacity. Then you also have a form of solid nitrogen that can be used, and that's usually um, urea, and that's when you uh, mix the gas with carbon dioxide and you get a a form of solid nitrogen and you can find it in this product which is 20.5 percent um, urea nitrogen. If you notice 24 percent of the mix is nitrogen when you use this. That's too high. You don't need this much nitrogen. You're going to end up getting very lush green plants, you know, very leafy greens. That's what nitrogen does. It really produces lots of leaves. But that's too high and I'll talk about it as I go on. One thing I learned over the last 15 years is it really doesn't matter what product you use, that's your own personal choice. If you go organic, synthetic, combination of both, that's what I do. You just don't need as much as we're told we need for the garden. So we have water-soluble nitrogen and we have water-insoluble nitrogen. The water-soluble nitrogen, like these products, are fast-acting. As soon as you mix it, as soon as you put it in, on your plants, the leaves can absorb the nitrogen a lot of times. It goes right to the root system. Fast-acting, 24 hours, you might even see a difference. Water-insoluble means that the fertilizer, the nitrogen, has to get into the soil. It needs some sort of microbial activity that breaks down the source of the nitrogen and it makes it ready for the plant to use at some point. So when you garden, you want a combination of both, really. In, for instance, in the spring, you might put in a slow-release nitrogen fertilizer that will slowly release over the growing season. At some point, you may need to use a water-soluble if your plant maybe is struggling or you want to give it a boost. Four, actually, four or five main points. One, plants can't tell the difference between the fertilizers. What you decide to use is your choice, and like I said, what I learned is you just don't need as much fertilizer as you might think. But plants can't tell the difference between, you know, biologically um, broken down nitrogen or fixated nitrogen or chemical nitrogen. And really most important is too much nitrogen will hurt your plants. You could burn your plants technically if you use too much nitrogen. It will burn the leaves, it could burn the roots. Um, a lot of these products won't do that. But where you do the most harm is by using too much nitrogen. The plant grows too fast, it gets too uh, spindly, it grows too many leaves. Actually the cell structure of the plants get weaker. They're more susceptible to disease attack, insect attack, and basically you're making a very lush, green, leafy plant at the expense of the tomatoes, the peppers, or you know the vegetables you want. And you're making a great haven for insects to come and easily feed on your plant. So you don't want to overdo it. There are the slow release, fast release forms of nitrogen fertilizers. So you got to know what you're buying when you look. It usually will tell you if it's a slow release or fast release, but in general, liquid fertilizers are fast relief, granule forms are slower release. Use what is most available and convenient to you. I've found um, by doing these videos over the years, my videos reach gardeners from all over the world. Everybody doesn't have access to this like we do here in the US. Everybody doesn't have Amazon delivery where you can just order something. Everybody doesn't have the space to make compost. So use what you have available, use what works for you. And I just, for example, keep in mind, a lot of people will say, you know, well, use blood meal, it's all organic. Well, think about it. The pigs that are slaughtered are highly processed cattle, highly processed pigs. 
We're using their blood. It takes lots of energy to raise pigs. It takes chemicals to grow the feed. Um, the animals get hormone shots. All kinds of stuff is going on. So the end product might be organic, but the delivery of the product might not be as organic as you think. So I've said before, I use both organic products and synthetic products. That's my choice, but don't overstress about it. A couple of um, recommendations. I recommend try and make compost if you can. Use it in spring. Get it into your garden. It's a low amount of fertilizer. It's usually like a 1-1-1, but it adds to the uh, biodiversity of your soil. It builds good soil. It's, it not only helps the plants, but it helps the microbes and, and um, different organisms in your soil. Generally speaking, pellets, granules, I put into my garden bed, into the planting hole. Those are slow release. I use liquid fertilizers more for my container plants because they really pull the nutrients out of the soil much more quickly than your tomatoes that grow in, you know, earth beds. Or use that fertilizer for a boost. Try and keep the, the nitrogen number in the NPK or the ratio 12 or less. You really, in my experience, don't need more than that. You can go to something with like 253 or a 620. Um, this is another form of organic um, nitrogen. It's heat dried microbes that have digested organic matter and wastewater, basically sewage. This product is actually the organisms that ate the sewage. Um, you're putting them into your earth bed, into your containers even if you want. And the organisms that are alive in your soil will then begin to break this down and bring nitrogen to your soil. That's another form of organic matter. Again, it's sewage. People may have issue with that. This is fish emulsion. This is made really from, you know, essentially rotting fish. And that is organic. I talked about this. This is organic. This is feather meal, composted manure. One more... Uh, way to bring nitrogen to your garden, and I really want to stress the value of it, is the beans, are the peas, are the crimson red clover. If you have the ability, you can cast a whole lot of beans, a whole lot of peas, uh, crimson clover is a great way because you can buy it cheaply, um, and grow these plants in your garden bed, turn it over before planting, and you're going to get a nice uh, a nice amount of organic matter in your beds and it will break down into into nitrogen. So if you can compost in the spring, try some cover crops and then pick out what you want that works best for you. And then finally the most important thing is to really have fun. The goal of gardening is to enjoy the vegetables, is to, is to grow the vegetables. Don't be overwhelmed between all of these products whether or not you're going to be organic, a gardener, or a synthetic gardener, or a combination of both, or one is better than the other, pick out what works for you. Understand what the nitrogen numbers are, what you're putting into your garden, and just learn and have fun. I've been doing this for well over 15 years. I learn something new every year. Enjoy yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a little bit more about what nitrogen is, how it's used in your garden. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.